the Tesla Solar 2022 update is here. So how is Tesla Solar faring these days? Recently, we've talked about the company's energy section, but the focus has always been on large battery storage systems. It's been a while since we looked deep into Tesla's solar power generation sector. And that, frankly, has a lot to do with the fact that things aren't doing so well there right now. It's difficult to sugarcoat some of the recent issues, and now everything is being made worse by a surprise solar panel cash grab from the state of California, which was meant to be the green energy champions, but just turned out to be a bunch of fools. Let's speak about where Tesla Solar is planning to be in business until 2022. Hey everyone, and welcome to Tesla News, where we bring you the newest and best updates about Tesla and Elon Musk. For daily videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. The difficulties they encounter, and how they could go about changing things in the future. All right, so at the center of Tesla's solar pitch is a product that looks like a standard shingled or tiled roof, but actually contains photovolatilic solar cells, obviating the requirement for both roofing and solar panel installation. Tesla would just combine the two jobs and provide the most cost-effective solar solution while retaining the house's original appearance and not announcing to the neighbors that you're a big nerd with a solar-powered house. Furthermore, Elon Musk promised Tesla investors that the Tesla roof tiles would be particularly developed to be more durable and long-lasting than normal shingles, and at least as good as, if not better than, premium slate tile roofing when he proposed the acquisition of SolarCity. Elon Musk's decision was extremely risky for a variety of reasons. For one thing, the breakthrough solar roof tiles that Elon prioritized was a revolutionary solar roof tile. A non-functioning dummy tile was used as a prop during his presentation to Tesla stockholders. It had no ability to serve as a solar panel or a roof tile. Elon had a great idea but lacked engineering specifics. This was not the first or last time Elon Musk put the cart before the horse, but it's been working out well for him. So who's to argue? Thing two, Solar City was a company founded by two of Elon Musk's cousins, who were pretty much relying on their much smarter and more business savvy cousin. Tied to assisting in the direction of the company, Elon Musk had a significant stake in the race from a personal standpoint because, three, Solar City was in dire financial straits prior to the Tesla deal, and they were only able to hang on for as long as they did because Elon Musk transferred $90 million from SpaceX to SolarCity through the sale of SolarCity bonds to SpaceX. There were three of these sales, totaling roughly $255 million, but only the first two were able to fly without assistance. The concept behind these bond sales was that the money would be used to pay for SolarCity installations right now, with the bonds being paid back to SpaceX after 15 years with 4.4% interest. So why did SolarCity need to take out so much debt? They had this strange, dumb business strategy of leasing or renting solar panels to customers. The firm would come out and install a solar system on your roof for free, and you would only have to pay them a monthly charge after that. There are a few positive aspects to the concept. It's also good for the company in the sense that they remain the owners of all the solar panels, and thus receive all of the green energy tax credits and rebates, rather than the homeowner. It's also good for the company in the sense that they don't have to pay the full cost up front. Not everyone has a large savings account, and that's fine. You can still go green and pay it off month by month. It's also good for the company in the sense that they don't have to pay. Of course, the obvious disadvantages is that SolarCity is recurring massive expenses with the purchase of materials and installation costs, and then only receiving the small streams of revenue in return, which will take years to cover the initial cost. This is why Elon Musk was in court last year, being sued by a group of Tesla shareholders who were still upset about the SolarCity acquisition five years earlier, the one in which Elon described the prosecution attorney as a horrible human being who had been influenced by criminals. Elon was also known for dragging out proceedings by telling a long anecdote every time he was asked a question. Throughout the entire trial, Elon refused to give a yes or no answer, and as far as I can tell, there has yet to be a ruling on that case. That's the story of how Tesla got into the solar panel business. Most of you are probably aware that the solar roof tile was eventually invented for real and has been installed on hundreds of homes over the last few years. But the rollout of the solar roof was not the end of the rocky road for Tesla's solar deployment numbers, which peaked in 2017 and then rapidly declined. 
The change in ownership to Tesla came with much reduced sales pressure, which is not surprising given that Tesla was more focused on making their very expensive solar roof tile system and expected customers to pay the full price for the product up front, a much different business model. Whereas Solar City had been hyper aggressive with their marketing tactics, which included things like door to door salesmen. Even looking at their most recent public figures from 2021, Tesla Solar is still doing approximately half the amount of installations than Solar City was doing in their peak, which isn't necessarily a negative thing. Working smarter, not harder, is a popular business adage for a reason. But Tesla wasn't exactly working smarter with its solar roof projects which came to a head in the spring of 2021, when we had a very ugly situation involving unanticipated price rises. Essentially, the firm began raising costs on clients' quotes that had previously been approved. Of course, a quote is a quote, not a guarantee, so a small deviation can probably be tolerated. But Tesla was making massive price adjustments, increasing the cost by 50% or more, in some cases, more than double, which in a project of this scale translates to tens of thousands of dollars in additional costs to the homeowner. People were outraged, with good reason. Elon attributed much of this to what he called major errors in estimating the difficulty of specific roofs. Despite this, he stressed that demand for solar roofs continues to outstrip the company's ability to supply and install them. Part of the reason for this is the increased complexity of a Tesla solar roof. It's a work of engineering genius, but it also takes much longer to install than a traditional shingle roof. We are talking a week or more of labor versus a couple of days, since each roof is customized to a modular prefabricated system. All of the parts must be built in factory first, then packed and shipped to the job site. Your contractor can't just pick up a few cases of Tesla tiles on the way to do the job. Anyways, this all resulted in a class action lawsuit by people who had already signed contracts for their solar roof prior to the price increase in April. By September 2021, Tesla had agreed to settle and return those customers to their original pricing, which was an obvious step for them to take and should have come as no surprise to anyone. Now, there's something we hardly ever talk about. We may have never even mentioned this factory before, but it does exist. There is a Tesla factory in New York State, but it is not a true Tesla Gigafactory like the ones in Austin, Texas, or even the one in Nevada. This Buffalo factory was acquired as part of the Solar City acquisition, but it came with a commitment with the state of New York to produce a particular number of jobs and maintain a certain level of the investment. Now concluding it, the state of California does offer solar incentives in the form of tax credits and rebates, which means they'll help you install the panels with rebates. Then, they'll take the money back in the form of extra fees, which they'll use to try and fix the shoddy electrical grid that forced you to buy the panels in the first place. Having said that, I firmly believe that home-based, or at the very least, community-based solar energy is the way of the future. The only question is how long it will take for it to materialize. So, this was all. Add your thoughts in the comments section below. Hit the bell icon and also like, subscribe, and share our channel, and stay with us till our next video. We will see you soon with our next video, so be with us and go watch our Tesla Model X video on your left to see some positive aspects about it as well. Or you can watch our newly updated Tesla Model 3 2022 on your right and learn more about the Tesla world. Thank you so much for watching.